you just saw me flowing our latest uh, Holden V8 VN style aluminium head. We now therefore have two versions. We have one version which has got an 8, 182 to 183 cc uh, intake runner volume. That one flows with a 202 valve. Uh, that flows about 590 horsepower out of the box. We continue to develop that head because, to be quite honest, um, we wanted a product that a customer can take out of the box and build a racing engine with. Now the 590 horsepower head's fantastic for engines up to 450 to 500 horsepower, depending on the capacity of the engine. The new head is exactly the same, but it's got an incredibly improved exhaust port and the intake port with uh, a 202 valve flows nearly 620 horsepower out of the box and with a 208 intake valve it flows just over 640 horsepower out of the box. Compare that to anything else. Compare that to a cast iron head you're likely to get ported and think about the cost very carefully because you'll find we do a complete package and those packages are always on our website comeracing.com and check it out and for the money you cannot buy better value now the percentages I've printed out a couple of the flow uh, results but it's very interesting to note the percentage of intake to exhaust is consistently over 75% um, for those of you who know CFM numbers, with a 208 valve, this head flows at 600 inch lift, 304 CFM, which at 600 inch lift, I mean, uh, that's equivalent to 627 horsepower potential. At 700 inch lift, it's 637 horsepower. At 800 inch lift, it's 641. The exhaust, 227 CFM and it's very strong the whole way. I mean what this means is the Holden is moving into incredible territory. Your 355, 383, 396 capacities are now extremely well fed and if you can get a head like that to suit flat tappet or hydraulic roller applications for well under $4,000 brand new out of the box with stainless valves, big springs, I mean, it's a no-brainer. Why would you be going out and porting cast iron heads or anybody else's aluminium head for that matter? Mind you, if you're really keen, um, I'll show you the ports in a minute, but you can get an incredible amount of extra airflow out of them for those of you who are building full-on, specific-purpose race engines. Our chamber shape is the same as our 590 horsepower head, we can't beat on that. We've tried a hundred different ways of doing it and this one just works. Minimum detonation potential, you can run very high compression ratios and you'll see this is as cast. We've just taken the die grinder to smooth down, a, you know, it took a minute to do this both the intake and exhaust, we've taken a die grinder to the interface between the seat and the actual casting. And those are the flow numbers that came up. These heads will make incredible torque and incredible power. As well as that, this is still a relatively small 207cc intake volume, intake runner volume. Now that's tiny compared to the airflow numbers it's pushing out. Okay, we're going to have a look at a little bit more on the cylinder head area in terms of assembly and explain a couple of things you should be aware of. We're out here in the shop. Aaron's cutting the seats on our latest 600 series VN style alloy head. We do all the heads in house. Uh, the head castings are manufactured right here in Melbourne. There's no overseas components used. In fact, the guides are manufactured in Melbourne, uh, as are the 
very hard stellite seats which we use on both intake and exhaust. It's an Australian product and we're very proud of the fact that it's the best flowing and best working cylinder head on the market by far. What's important, uh, we do a nice three to four angle seat job and we set the levels of the seats evenly so our combustion chamber volumes are all even. When a customer orders a complete head, we will finish the chambers to whatever they require. And what we'll go and have a look at in a minute is a couple of factors that you need to know when you're installing uh, all the components into your heads. You may not buy our heads, you may have cast iron heads or whatever, but there's a couple of simple things you really, really need to know and we'll show you those in a second. We've got Aaron now taken one of the cylinder heads and he's put a little bit of wheel bearing grease on the valve to seat interface. He's put some grease, as you can see, uh, on the deck. He's filling from uh, a, a chemist style burette and we're basically measuring the combustion chamber volume and this comes back to the same as I said earlier about our deck height. We have a piston with a certain dish or we have a head gasket thickness, we have a final piston deck height and this the chamber is the final piece in that puzzle for determining what compression ratio we will have or modifying those bits and pieces to achieve the compression ratio that we need. Aaron will just push a valve in, attach a retainer and the collets or valve locks he's using to assemble this head and he'll use uh, a caliper to measure the actual gap or the height between the spring pad and the base of the retainer. This dimension gives us the installed height of the spring. Now that's critical because if the installed height is insufficient you have coil bind and your brake parts. If it's too much the spring pressure may be too weak for the specific job it's designed to do. 